Welcome to this QuickBooks 2019 tutorial for beginners on how to use your fixed asset item list. My name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University and we have the home screen here for QuickBooks 2019. And the fixed asset item list essentially replaced the fixed asset manager in QuickBooks uh, from QuickBooks 2018. And so I wanted to walk through uh, what it looks like and how to set up a fixed asset item, okay? All right, so if you go to your list drop down menu here, you're going to see this option here. It says fixed asset item list. All right, so if we click on this, you're going to see that it's got uh, all of your fixed assets in your business. Okay, so if you're not familiar with what a fixed asset is, these are things you buy in your business that are expected to last longer than a year. Okay, so if you buy office supplies, pencils, pens, paper, pads of paper, sticky notes, whatever. Those are not expected to last longer than a year. So those are not what's called a fixed asset. Okay. But if you see things on this list, like you've got a computer, printer, chairs, table, uh, you've got vehicles, building equipment, land, those things are all expected to last longer than a year. Okay. So in accounting, you can't write those off immediately they become what's called an asset in your business. They go on the balance sheet because, and they, and they are written off over time. That's what depreciation is. And that's how you write them off over time. Okay. So a fixed asset usually is going to be something pretty big. Well, it doesn't have to be big, but it's something that's going to last you longer than a year in your business. Okay. All right. So you can see here in the fixed asset item list, you've got all these different items, the, the, you know, they, they have put like 15 next to it, three. So these are the numbers of, of items that they have. Now, I generally don't like to do this, uh, to put the number next to it. And, and the reason is, uh, if, assuming that's what they're signifying here, the reason is because when you go into one of these, I'm going to double click this. Okay. If you track, uh, each one of these, individually so if you put in eight desktop pcs okay that gives you the opportunity to put in the serial number for each one the location for each one when the warranty expires and then when you eventually sell it you can mark the item as sold and show the sales price okay but if you lump eight of them together that you purchase you can't put in the serial number you can't put in uh the you know if you sell one of them or dispose or you know if one of them dies and you just get rid of it you can't necessarily track that one of them was sold since they are all recorded in this lot of eight or five i'm not sure how what they signify here number of computers okay so i always recommend to put these in individually all right so let me cancel this and get out of here so let's put in a new one i'm going to show you here okay so what you're going to do uh, let's say that we buy a stand-up desk okay all right and this is going to be a pretty expensive one okay so first of all you're going to put in the name what it is okay this is like a, a description all right and if you have a number okay you can put that there but let's like i said before let's put these in individually so stand-up desk okay as a fixed asset we're going to put it as furniture and equipment okay so this is the account that this is going to go to in quickbooks all right purchase description i mean if you need to put in an additional description you can um you know i think that's pretty self-explanatory this is a new item we'll say that the date was today december 15th 2023 okay the cost we're going to say that this was thirty five hundred dollars and by the way, when you buy a fixed asset, the sales tax and shipping would all go into the cost of the asset. Okay. All right. So vendor payee, um, you can put in, we'll say that this is uh, staples. Okay. All right. We have not sold it. So this is all blank. The asset description will be stand up desk in Larry's office, okay? Or whatever you want to put in for the description. Okay, location, Larry's office. And of course, if you have, you know, let's say multiple locations, 
different offices you would put in the location there we're assu i'm assuming here this is one office and we have one big office we have multiple people's offices so we'll say this is larry's office okay uh we didn't issue a po so we don't have a po number but if you did you can put that in serial number we'll say one two three whatever i'm going to type in dash r and if we have a warranty okay we're going to say that this expires let's say July 15th, 2024, okay? All right, and that's it. So we set this up. We say it was $3,500, goes to furniture and equipment. All right, we've got our fixed asset item set up, okay? All right, fixed asset must have a purchase description, okay? So it's making me put something in there. Uh, we're gonna say purchase of fixed asset uh, stand up desk. All right, so we hit OK, and now you'll see that we have a stand-up desk, and I can expand this out and show it here. Okay, $3,500, okay, the cost basis is $3,500, okay. Now, none of this is showing up in here, uh, and I'll show you why. Okay, so if we go over to the balance sheet, we'll say as of December 31st, and I go to furniture and equipment, okay, you're going to see, okay, so if I, let me just do all on here. You're going to see the $3,500 is not in here, okay? It's, it's not recorded as a transaction, okay? And this is the important thing. The fixed asset item list does not record these items as purchased, all right? I'm going to show you how that shows up in here, all right? So don't be confused. If you put it on the fixed asset, asset item list, that does not mean that it is put into your books. This is simply just for tracking purposes, all right? So let's go and let's say uh, enter a bill or no, let's do this. Let's say that we're going to, we're going to write a check. All right. And we are going to write a check to, um, I'm just going to pick uh, Bayshore water. Uh, no, we're going to write our check. Okay. So this was for $3,500. All right. Now this is defaulting to utilities because this is Bayshore water. But if this was a, uh, for this stand-up desk, all right, you've got these two options. You've got expenses, you've got items. Okay, we want to make sure when we set it up in the fixed asset item list that we record this uh, in an, as an item. Okay, so I'm going to go down here and look, and we're going to see there's our stand-up desk, fixed asset. Okay, description, purchase a fixed asset. All right, the cost should be $3,500, $3,500. If you need to uh, put this to a class, you can. Uh, we'll say this is overhead, okay? And then we hit save and close. So now we have recorded the purchase of this. And if you go back to the balance sheet and we go into our furniture and equipment, let me do all again. Now you're gonna see here is our $3,500 stand-up desk, okay? So you still have to record the transaction to show that you actually bought this fixed asset. And again, the fixed asset item list is simply for tracking purposes, okay? If you have any questions, uh, any comments, please feel free to leave them below. And uh, also join me at the QuickBooks University. You know, we've uh, got a great group of members over there. Members are people that purchase the training tutorials. It's a one-time fee. Uh, there's never any other fees. You get lifetime access and you can ask your personal QuickBooks questions uh, to me and a group of like-minded people. Website is qbuniversity.org, and I look forward to seeing you over there.